for me, it's always been about getting the right sound from the start, the right instrument with the right microphone. I'm very lucky to have expanded my mic locker throughout the years, but unfortunately not all of my clients have that same luxury. With IK's mic room, now they can get a step closer. IK Multimedia has always been a company at the forefront of serving the digital domain. They haven't quite gotten their finger on time travel yet, but with their new T-Rex plug-in mic room, I'm going to show you how I prep a mix before getting down and dirty with processing to kind of feel a little bit like a time traveler. So typically, the first thing I'll do when I get a track from a client to mix is I'll just go through each individual source and kind of see how it was recorded, see what it feels like, and uh, if they give me what microphone they're using, which they did here, um, it's going to be very helpful for this tutorial. So uh, let's see what we got. So the kick was recorded with a D112, and the snare drum was recorded with uh, another standard, an SM57. So I'll just put some basic EQ and compression on them right now. Cool, so kick and snare moving forward, we're gonna be just fine. So let's take a look at the overheads now. Okay, so the overheads are recorded with SM58s, which we know are not the most ideal microphone for overheads. So this is a perfect time to open up IK's mic room and really see what we can do with that. Let's tell it that the source is an SM58. And now we can essentially go through and audition a whole bunch of mics that a lot of us really like. So let's do that. All right, so we've ended up at one of my favorite microphones uh, that I actually don't even own, which is a C12. And right away I heard a clarity and that harshness disappear out of these cymbals. So here it is without. Back in. So I'm gonna put it back on and I'm gonna play with the proximity so that we keep a good amount of that low end because the drums were only recorded with four mics. And we want to have a nice image of the kit with our overheads here, but we want to lose all that harsh and really nasty uh, low mids stuff that the, uh, the, the SM58s were bringing out. So here's the C12 and we're going to mess with our proximity. Nice, here it is off. So now we have way better sounding overheads and I can just put my kick and snare back in and know that I'm gonna have a really nice sounding drum kit. Now I could have gone through all the tracks first with a lot of subtractive EQ to make them sound a little closer to how I would have preferred to receive them, but with Mic Room and IK's DSM and SCC technology, I can move on to other processing knowing that I'll be working with the familiar frequency response and the nuanced character of some of the best microphones in the world. Alright, so let's move on to our bass track, which looks like it was recorded with a 421. Okay, now that bass actually, in my opinion, sounds great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just duplicate um, this bass track here. So now we could mess around with Mic Room on this as well on a duplicated track. 
So we're looking for 421 grit. And I've already said that I'd love to get an RE20 in there. So we have our Dynamic 20 by IK. Now, the way I like to record um, RE20s are sticking them as close to the grill as possible to really get that nice subby low end and push that diaphragm. And that's, when the ma that's where the magic really happens with that mic. So here it is off. Cool. So now I'm getting a lot of uh, a, a lot more balanced low end. And now, as I said before, I'm going to mix this in with the 421 and try to get a nice blend going. Alright, so we have a little acoustic guitar here. Let's check that out. So a little bit more low end than I'd like for this track, especially with all the cymbal hits that are going on. So let's try to get a completely different sound on this acoustic guitar. So now if we put our bass back in with it, it should feel pretty good. Turn it off again. Cool, so a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of EQ and a little bit of reverb, and I think that acoustic guitar is going to sit right in there perfectly with our other instruments. All right, now we have some electric guitar, so let's listen to see what that's doing. Um, it's just a good tone on the amp. The guitar players seem to know what they wanted. It has a little bit of a delay on there. I think this is a cool guitar sound. However, there is this part, if I were there as the producer or the engineer, I would have suggested, you know, let's take those, those big chords and kind of spread them out to the other side or make it a different sound, make it a little grittier. So that way I can have this more ambient thing to play with as, as if I have two electric guitar mics. So let's do that right now and let's drop this down to, um, to another track. Cool, so now that I have my cutouts right here, what we're going to do is we're going to stereoize this a little bit, move it over to the other side, and then we're going to keep this guitar where it was. And let's see if we can create some, you know, make a really cool part out of what we have, make it sound like it was recorded with two different mics. <laughs> It's cool that now I can hear harmonics, clarity, and you know, smoothness that wasn't there before and proceed to mix creatively instead of cautiously, almost as if I was there to track the band myself. <laughs> <laughs> 